All right, all right, students. Welcome to another edition of Model Talk Tuesdays. Before I introduce our guest, who is the amazing Algebra Blessed, let me show you one of her music videos. I hope everyone's having an awesome day. Welcome to another edition of Model Talk Tuesdays. Let me go ahead and play this video while our guest is coming in. And this is our guest this evening, Ms. Algebra Blessed. But listen, everybody can't be in my head. Everybody can't sleep in my bed. Everybody can't be up in my face. Everybody can't be all in my space. Now I might fuss a little bit, cuss a little bit, you know this, yeah. But if you trust a little bit, you gon' get 100%. I don't want nobody but you. Don't want nobody touching me, baby. I hope you all are having a fabulous Thursday. Welcome to another edition of Model Talk Thursdays. And we have an amazing guest with us. I am gonna call her a triple threat student in terms of our core values. We have fashion in the building, yes. We have beauty in the building, which we're gonna talk about. And then we also have entrepreneurship in the building. So. Algebra, welcome to another edition of Model Talk Thursdays. Thank you. Hi, for Pearl. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. So let me go ahead and give a shout out to some of the students that are in the chat. Sophia, I see you. Treasure, I see you. Adara, I see you. D, I see you, Tanisha, I see, yes, y'all are rocking to her music. I was gonna play it a little bit later, but I said, let me go ahead and start with that. Okay, and then Keon, love the song. All right, so before we get into the music algebra, 
I am introducing you to uh, my students and I would love for them to get the foundation first in terms of, and some of them already know you, but for, the, for those that don't, could you start with your roots, where you're from, your foundation? Uh, let's start there. Sure. Well, first off, hi, students. I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all live. Um, Pearl keeps me posted on what's going on with her in the academy. So I'm very, very proud of you. Um, algebra's roots, my roots. I come from a musical family and um, I've always been around music. I won't, I would be very honest with you. I didn't know I would take this path in the beginning. I initially wanted to be a dancer, like a, a Vegas showgirl, if you will. Feathers and sequins, kicking my legs up, smiling and being a part of a chorus line. So I wanted to do something different in the musical field, something different from my family. Everyone in my family plays an instrument. Someone, someone sings um, the theatrics, you know, someone's an actress, actor. So I, I just wanted to do something a little different. But it's funny how when things are purposeful for you and you're called to do certain things, you find it easy to not fight it and you just fall into place and you adapt and it's just been going ever since. Algebra, I can relate because my dream was not to be a model algebra, but <laughs> no matter where I went, you all, when I was like 14, 15, 16, you're a model, you're a model, you should be modeling. And I finally gave in. And I guess to the point of you may have, you know, I wanted to travel the world, but mo yes. well, modeling was the outlet for me to do it, but it wasn't my dream. But obviously it was my purpose uh, because God put me in a lot of places. So I can totally relate to that. And algebra, my jaw is dropped because I had no idea that you wanted to be a Vegas, a, what? a Vegas show girl. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. I was ready for an eight count in a heartbeat and ready to follow. I've always wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself. So that made sense. Um, but I did find that no matter what emotional state I was in, it was always the singing and songwriting that I felt normal. You know what I mean? It, it, it was my comfortable place and um, it takes work, but it was my comfortable place. And I had to really take a little time to, to see that. Wow. Yeah. Kind of a space for you to connect with your inner self and, and have sure. those moments with, with yourself. And then if you decide to share it with the world, you know, that's your music. So tell us, yeah. because Algebra, I've been blessed to know you just being in this amazing soul circuit. But as I was thinking about this interview, I think I, I was saying this is the first time that I'm going to go in, you know. And uh oh, really, I'm nervous. Really, really. really. Well, it's like, you know, the, the academy is about development, self-development, confidence and those different things. So I wouldn't do this interview just if I didn't, you know, kind of get into like um, what our girls should expect on their journey um, towards their dreams, the entertainment field, the modeling world, the beauty world. So in terms of your music, I know that's a, a big part of how the world sees you in terms of your artistry. Can you tell us, you come from a musical family. When did you decide to say, okay, although I wanted to be a dancer, I'm gonna go ahead and do this music thing. Like when did that happen and, and what was that journey like? Okay, so don't laugh at me. It was, honestly, it was probably my sixth grade year, right? So I grew up in a, uh, I won't call it strict. We used to call it strict, but there were things that I, was, I wasn't allowed to do, like as a young lady. No pants. Um, you couldn't do what the boys did. Um, we had eating restrictions. So I remember I wanted to run track. Can't run track because you can't wear shorts, right? So all my friends are doing things. They're playing basketball. They're running track. So my way of being able to stay after school was to be in the gospel choir. Ah. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> so I remember auditioning in the sixth grade, not because I wanted to sing in the choir. It was completely because I wanted to hang out with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to walk home from school with my friends. It's funny the things that you find yourself doing because of friends. Um, but I thank God for that moment of me wanting to 
have a relationship with my friends because I probably wouldn't have never been so smart <laughs> to go and audition for a gospel choir. But I auditioned, I got in, and um, I think that was the bug. I my my initial plan was to only stay after school to be with my friends as a young sixth grader. But I remember that first choir practice, getting that sheet music, learning those songs, mm. and it totally left my brain. I yeah. felt something. Wow. I literally felt something. And I don't know that it wasn't, be- I don't think it was because it was the gospel choir, because I was already in chorus. Mm-hmm. I think it was the, mm. the bug of, I can do this and I don't have to do it. Mm. I have a choice. So once I knew I had a choice, I found myself loving it. And it snowballed into a lot of things. I started to travel more with music in grade school, ended up going to a performing arts high school. I was still taking dance in grade school. Um, I auditioned for dance at, uh, at North Atlanta High. And there was this one beautiful, oh my God, she was so graceful. When she auditioned and she didn't make it, I went to the chorus room and auditioned. I was like, if I can't get in here with dance, I know I can get in here with singing. Ooh, yes. So I chickened out. So it's okay. funny how fear wow. and, and, and different motivations have yes. always taken me to the music. So. Yes. So it sounds like music is your comfortable space and mm-hmm. you have reassurance in that space that I got this no matter what. Mm-hmm. But yeah, these are some of my other interests. Okay. Yes. So students, you just saw Algebra's single, Nobody But You. Now, my favorite one is At This Time. I played it on repeat when it came out. Uh, (laughs) Yes. So tell us about your last project. And is music still, you know, um, something that you're going to be producing? And and yeah, tell us where, where you are with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Music is definitely music is a, is all around me. It, um, I can grab this guitar like off the wall here. Like music is, yeah, music is all around me. It's not, it's not a secondary thing. It's a part of me. It's not even on the list. Okay, mm-hmm. it is who I am. It is my beginning and my ending. Um, as God is the beginning and ending, it. It's a part of me. It's a part of my makeup. I can't imagine life without it. I can't imagine life without my faith. I can't imagine life without being able to hear the music, sing the music, convey the music. So it's, it's. (laughs) At this time, in this place, you are mine. Yeah, it's gonna stay around. That that listen, <laughs> there's no music, there's no that it's like music and math, you know, it that's a universal language. For someone to ever say, I don't like music, I can't even fathom that. I can't even fathom it. Yeah. You are like, why is algebra just loving on me and, and just gave me that blessing? You all like, come on. Like, that's my <laughs> favorite song by you. Okay. So for those of those, some students are interested in music. Yeah, I know y'all. Okay. Beautiful voice is what they're saying. And I apologize. You can't see the chat. It's on the YouTube live. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Alexis saying, I love it. Gail, we see you. Okay, treasure throwing hearts. Yes. Um, for, for those that are interested in the music field, before we move on to your aerialist and all of the other creative sides, mm-hmm. to you, what would you say in terms of being an artist in this industry? Mm-hmm. Being um, what what are some some tips you could give in terms of staying true to you? Like what, what are some, what are some wisdom that you can give to upcoming artists that are approaching this industry uh, or should I say are ready to be vulnerable to the world with their art? Exactly what you just said. You're, if you don't know who you are, 
then you've already failed. Mm -hmm. So take that time out to figure out who you are, even in that moment, and be okay with change. You're not going to be the person that you are today in two years. That's the whole point is to change. It's to absorb everything that you can and make something beautiful. And because someone needs that, someone outside of yourself needs that. And then you have to be able to transform. You got to be fluid. You never want to stay the same. It's boring, number one. And life is too short for you to stay the same. Even water has different forms. Mm -hmm. You know, you put heat to it. You put it in the cold. So you have to be fluid. And um, but water knows it's water when it's water. Ice knows it's ice when it's ice. You know what I mean? Air, steam, you have to know, gas, you have to know who you are in the moment that you're being that person. And be inspired. Being inspired is not copying anyone. Allow people to inspire you so that you can become something that the world has never seen. You all dropping gems. I feel like Bruce Lee has this book. I'm like, okay, this is the book of like algebra. You know how Bruce Lee say float, be water and all of those different things. I was, it was tapping into that, that, that wisdom. Okay. So now I understand the aerialist a little bit more with the dance background. Mm -hmm. So doing aerial work, I noticed that it was you put your 100% into that. Tell me how you were introduced to it. And let's talk about that. A Groupon. <laughs> <laughs> it's no amazing story. It came from a Groupon. I was being fluid. You know I was what? invited. No, seriously. So a homeboy of mine, he got me a... Um, Gave me a, a, a trapeze school of New York, New York school of trapeze. And it was around my birthday time. So he got me this Groupon so I can go jump up and down. Like, this is me. I love this. I'm a, I love adrenaline, right? So I go to this um, gymnastic school, circus school, and I see this fabric hanging. And I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I didn't know what it was um, because no one was on the fabric. So I'm getting ready to leave. Um, there was this amazing instructor, by the way. And it's funny how God works, right? He's teaching me these flips on the trapeze. I'm jumping higher than I've ever jumped before. And I'm excited. As I'm leaving, someone climbs the fabric. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I come back to Atlanta because I was living in New York at the time uh, when I was visiting. I came back to Atlanta and one of my sister friends, she goes, Algebra, come with me. I got this coupon to this place called Sky Gym. I'm like, okay, cool. We go. And they're telling us to pull ourselves over in this fabric. I walk in and I'm like, oh, this is what I saw in New York. I'm ready. I'm going to do it. We do it. She hated it. Absolutely hated it. I got home. My entire body was sore after the first day. And I was like, I'm definitely going back. The soreness made me want to, why am I so sore? Why can't I move my arms? Why am I feeling like a Tyrannosaurus? And I ended up going back and, um, I've just been doing it ever since. And I, and I take it serious because it, I don't like going to a gym. I didn't realize that I was working out and be, being healthy and my body was recovering. And I remember starting aerials right before I started to re, um, record the second album, Recovery. And it just tied in so perfectly. My body was sore. I've never felt my muscles. I get muscle spasms as a kid, but my body had never ached so bad Mm -hmm. it just didn't intimidate me and mm -hmm. all I kept thinking was I'm sore because I'm about to be stronger so ding 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 again it's like ooh, that's my life that's any trauma that I've ever had it's all about the recovery process you have to continue you have to so all of that to say that's how I got into aerials and I still do it I still love it I stop and go a lot of times because being on the road or just life just doesn't allow you to go as often as you would want to because you have other responsibilities. So I, I do, it's my relief. It, it's my, um, some people go to the gym. I like hanging upside down. It reminds me of my boxing journey algebra. So, you know, yeah, waiting tables at Highland Bakery, Biggs walk in and I see the boxing on his shirt and I'm like, 
Hey. You're good. <laughs> Girl, you're good. Thank you. Like, your coordination is so good. I, I remember going to boxing with Biggs and just to watch you, you are so, like you're smooth and you're quick and you're strong. It's amazing. Thank no you. one would ever think, yeah, you're hype. Yeah, okay. But then you walk on the on the, the catwalk. It's a whole nother grace. So it that balance is amazing. I just have to tell you that. The balance that you have with that, yes. that's amazing. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you, sis. So my my vision is to be on a big screen, you know, doing some some martial arts or something, yeah. boxing, fighting with that. Um, but also boxing for me. I was sore the first day and I said, okay, here's a challenge. So as you were saying that, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, algebra likes a challenge. Um, so, so I could relate. Okay. Just checking in the chat room. Hilarious. I'm not sure what part was when y'all said that <laughs> moment, but also feel free to drop questions in the chat. You all, um, as we're going through a way, a Groupon. Yes. That's what she said, girl, a Groupon. Okay. So, (laughs) (laughs) oh, yes. Okay. I love a good group. They're a little bit more expensive now, but they used to be really good. I guess it's gotten so popular. They're like, yeah, go lift, uh, increase these prices. Okay. So, one thing I love is your fashion sense algebra. You are so unique. You are so unique. So, being that, you know, we are models. Are you think would you ever release a fashion line? And when you do put yourself together, what are some of the thoughts that that are going through your mind? Because my thought is I know it's very natural, but if you can give us anything in terms of your fashion and who you are, uh, what yes. would it be? I'm a, speaking of fashion, Byron Garrett told me to tell you hello from Babicio. Yeah. Uh, he said hi. He's a phenomenal fashion designer. I love his stuff. Um, I'll, he he typically does men's clothes, but I love wearing men's clothes as well. So it probably works out. Um, I I design clothes. I've I've I I consider myself just I play with it. Um, I've had some requests to start a line with a few pieces, but because I know so many amazing designers and seamstresses, it's kind of like I, I'm not at that level. So that that's a part of the second guessing of being someone that's capable of doing a lot you second guess yourself so I do it for fun but for someone they someone else may see something that I don't see but that's why we are who we are right so I love comfortable clothing um they called me a tomboy at one point but I just like comfortable clothes I love big clothes and I like fitted clothes as well I am into fashion to the degree of me it's I'm not a label person. Um, it doesn't have to be designer. What's designer? I wear designer. If I design it, then I'm wearing designer. That's my mindset. Boom. Boom. You know? Yeah. So I love certain fabrics. Um, I love certain lines. So there are certain things that I like for me. And um, I can see it on other people too, but I just kind of wear what's comfortable. I refuse to wear anything uncomfortable if I'm not getting a check for it. But then that's that model. See, I'm not a model. You know, but hey, if I could wear a uh, $10,000 chain knife dress and I just got to walk, I totally do it. But I love that, you know. That high fashion, that avant-garde oh, type yeah. stuff. Okay, Beautiful. so let's let's get into this love lips. Okay. Yes. So what I'd like to do is pull it up first. Well, yeah, let me pull it up first so that the students can get a look at it. And then we are going to get into the story behind it. So okay. you all, Algebra is the founder, the CEO of Love Lips. And I just ordered mine. I can't wait for mine to come in. So Algebra, as we have this going yes. on in the screen, could you give us some feedback on the brand, why yes. you started it and anything you want us to know about it? Absolutely. So Love Lips came about um, after, of course, being in the public eye and having to get your makeup done by different types of makeup artists. I found as a woman of color, there were certain colors that I felt like I didn't look too good in. So when you have your reds, your pinks, and um, I did find a line of lipstick that I loved. And the guy that owned it, I was telling him how much I always get compliments on my lipstick color. It was this red that I would always wear. And 
it's amazing because he said, well, algebra, you should have your own lipstick line. It's like, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe not. Um, I'll just keep buying yours and I'll just keep sending you clientele. It's like, no, I think you should do it because I know you're about your business. I know this is something that um, if you want to be passionate about it, you can be. And he connected me and he gave me the stuff to research. And I literally remember researching for about 11 to 13 months mm. on myself, trying different colors and shades out on myself and the women in my family, because we are a plethora of colors. Like we have different skin tones and some of us have a green undertone. Others of us have a yellow undertone. So it was just really fun to play makeup with my sisters, my mom, my aunt. And after doing that for about a year or so, I decided to just jump the gun, go ahead and do it, invest in myself, start a lipstick line. And once I started to research, I found that there are so many people with lipstick lines, but not one time did I ever doubt, well, who's going to buy mine? I automatically knew that this is something that I like. Um, I have a purpose behind, behind it. So why not do it? And uh, that's how it came to be. Right now we have 13 colors. By the beginning of spring, I should have about 20 to 22 colors. We have some colors dropping in April and new, new ways to just apply the lipstick. And for right now, I'm just focusing on the lipstick. I'm wearing my green and my turquoise today in lieu of St. Patrick's Day. All the lipsticks are named after the women in my family. So right now I am wearing Felicia and Robin, and that's myself and my aunt. <laughs> oh. It's um, these two greens that I decided oh. to put together. I mix and match with the lipsticks. Oh. And it's fun. I've even worn it on my face. You know, they, they're mask proof. I started it in 2019, not knowing that we were going to get ready to go through what we went through, you know, together in the world. And... Once they let us out, I figured out these lipsticks don't come off. Like, they're mask proof. I didn't know that. So it worked out. Because I was praying. I was like, Lord, nobody's going to be buying lipstick because we can't even go outside. Yeah. So what, what am I doing? And I'm playing around with it. I'm like, it's, it, it don't come off. It stays. And um, then we landed real estate in Neiman Marcus in 2020. Congratulations. That's huge. 21, 2021. Yeah. That is huge to have your, you. your brand associated with Neiman Marcus. That's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Who knew, you know, but I stand by the brand. I stand by it so much. And the colors are beautiful for women of color, um, people of color, if you will. The they they're translucent or transparent. So the red, the green that I have on will look completely different on you, Pearl. It's going to fit your face. The mm -hmm. reds, the pinks. The pinks and the reds are really what catapulted my, this endeavor of mine because, you know, we have naturally lined lips. So mm -hmm. when we put a pink on, it could look really strange if we're not putting a lot of concealer on and covering up blemishes. Um, a lot of, we have the hyperpigmentation around our mouths. We have to put concealer on to make it look a certain way because what we see in magazines and televisions they don't really television they don't show um women of colors hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. so they're rarely wearing a pink or a bright yellow or a bright gold and with this line i was so happy i don't have to put a concealer on when i'm wearing green i don't have to line my lips because of the way that it's even the way that the tube is set up it looks like a lipstick mm -hmm. however it has that that nice. edge where you can kind of line your lips and you don't have to worry about it. And it dries perfectly. It dries really quick. Um, yeah, so that's my, I like it. I like it a whole lot. That's wonderful. And that gives, the wand gives you more control with application. Yes. Absolutely. Now, a couple of things. I tell the students with entrepreneurship, um, because algebra, all of the students have to do an entrepreneurship project at the end of the 16 yeah. weeks is that when you're starting a, a company, it's something spiritual. And what I heard from you and what it sounds like is you have all the women in your family with you on this lipstick journey because you've named your lipsticks after the women in your family. So yes. what an amazing 
you know, homage and energy around mm -hmm. what you're doing with that. Mm -hmm. And it was for me, it was definitely for me. I, I, I started a candle line in 2016 and I make these candles by hand. When you burn them down, they burn to an oil. You can put it on your skin, right? So I do these by hand. I only make these candles when I am in the best head space and heart space. That's a promise that I made to myself. Mm -hmm. The orders got a little overwhelming at one point. Once show, and I would only sell them at shows. And I think I had them in Moves Music in Atlanta, a couple of record stores. So that was fun to do, especially on your downtime. But it becomes a, I only take big orders now with the candles, but with the lipsticks, that my attachment to that is because I did name these lipsticks after these brilliant, feisty, docile, uh, roller coaster ride women in my family. Even from my youngest niece to my great grandmother, both of my grandmothers and my great grandmother who is no longer here, my great great grandmother who's no longer here. So it kind of goes back and a lot of the colors really show them, show their personalities. My my biggest seller is the red. We sell out of that every time. That's Donna. That's my mom. But then there's this brighter red, which is Gwen, my aunt, and she's the feisty one. So it totally makes sense, you know. And it, it's it, the lipsticks tell a story for me, and I could literally write write a biography on every color and why it applies to that person in my family. Wow, beautiful! Yeah. I wonder if it'd be cool for you to put a picture, you know, with I mean, maybe I don't. It's just a thought. I want to. I want to do a photo shoot with them wearing the actual color. You know, mm -hmm. I really do, and just mm -hmm. giving their it child. We would be on the 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 video for days because. They are hilarious. I got it, you. It's, it's real. <laughs> and I what I was seeing also was like, um, they're old school pictures, like vintage pictures um, yes. with the lipstick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do have a question from Domination. Okay. She's saying, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite lipstick from your lipstick line? Sure, great question. So my favorite color for stage would be between the Gwen and the Donna. I'll mix those together and sometimes I, um, I'll mix a pink in there, but that's just for stage. Um, I wear it so much on stage when I go out to dinner or hanging out with my homies, I try not to wear the red. I try to do a green. I actually love this green. So many people are scared of this green. It's, they love it once they try it. So I would say this is the one color that, yeah, this is the one color that I think women should have different colors of lipsticks. You know, you, you shouldn't only have reds. You shouldn't, no woman should have five different types of red lipstick in her bag. You should have your red, you should have your pink, you should have your purple or your lavender. I actually ended up doing a five pack that I sell online. So what this does, it's a three pack and a five pack. And I strategically arrange those colors for you get your red and your nude for the typical woman that the working woman, she's not going to wear green to work. She's going to wear her red or her nude or her clear gloss. But I specifically put in a green and I specifically put in certain colors that they wouldn't necessarily migrate to because we have the weekend. You know, we have happy hour. We have those times where we can actually sit and play in our makeup to find a different version of ourselves. And then if you don't like it, I, I pretty much can guarantee that you have a friend in your life that would actually wear their green. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like buy a whole three pack or a five pack and then give the colors that you're not so comfortable with, with someone that you know going to rock it. Mm -hmm. So you're paying it forward. So that was the whole premise behind this. I would say the reds, the green, my first edition is absolutely my favorite. For springtime, it will be the second edition. Okay, you all, I'm just, <laughs> I for like, I have a whole other level. Okay, I just got to take all of this in. Okay, so we have a student saying that red, she's scared of red. Let me see, wait. Okay, uh, I want to make sure I get this quick. I'm so afraid of wearing red lipstick. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, it's okay. <laughs> okay, please. Why. Okay, algebra. Um, it's, it's taboo. Mm. If you Google where red lipstick came from and what society views the woman when she wears red lipstick, I get it. It's up to you to change that stigma. 
red lipstick. It I I I really should post some of these um these reviews at the time when I started selling them. They weren't able to put the reviews on, but I've literally teared up from people buying the lipstick. And there were so many women that said, Oh my God, I feel so beautiful. Oh my God, I actually feel sexy. Oh my God, I love it. There are certain things, and I'm thinking to myself, why wouldn't you feel beautiful? Why is this lipstick making you feel beautiful? But I get it now. Now that because I know how I feel when I put it on. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's to the point now it's like it's certain colors I'm only gonna wear without my lashes on. There are certain colors that I want to wear with lashes on. So a red is a very scary color because it's gonna put you out there. You're gonna be seen when you walk into a room. And that can be scary. That's why she's probably scared of wearing the red. Mm. And I understand it. Wear the red, wear it around the house. I always say, put your lipstick on, wear it around the house for a little while, forget that you have it on, go to the grocery store and then see what happens. That's how you trick yourself. I leave my phone in the car when I go to the grocery store and I'm panicking the whole time. Like, oh my God, am I missing the car? I get back in the car and no one has called. So it's, just, it's little bitty baby steps. Yeah. Got you. And that's the kind of yes. pull away from yes. being connected, being so, having to be mm-hmm. heavy phone all the time. Yes. Okay. So let me ask you this. Since we have models on, they love modeling. Are you booking models for Love Lips? Um, if they were interested in modeling for your brand, what would someone do? Anyone watching this, if they were interested in modeling for your brand? We're good. I would say talk more to Pearl because I think Pearl is going to be my go to to find these models. This is the agency that I will probably we're making this up as we go. This is the agency that I'm going to come and look for outside of my girlfriends. um, I was sitting at a table with some amazing singers and musicians the other day we had brunch and I looked around the table. and I was like, yo, I have some really beautiful friends. Why am I having to um, call um, people to model my lipstick? Mm-hmm. it's resources so if there's going to be an agency that I call it's going to be Pearls Academy and get some of these beautiful girls to model this lipstick because I want real women I want models we models make the world go around in my mind I'm a model like I'm a, a full giraffe okay in my mind however I understand the industry that we're in models work hard at looking regular regular people work hard at looking like a model we have to coexist we do coexist and we all embody both facets you know what i mean i i've 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 seen my mom be a homemaker and a Mm. working mom Mm -hmm. she did it my mom was a model Mm. she 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 was an old school model too like if i walk out on stage the wrong way she's really going in on me it's like hold your head up but it was like, Ma, I got to play the guitar. Like, leave me alone, you know? So we embody both. So yes, I'll be calling your agency. And that's how you get booked for Love Lips. It's by Algebra B. There you go. Shout out to a lady yeah. named Pearl Agency. Yeah. Okay, so three tips that you can give in terms of entrepreneurship. Uh, what, what would those three tips be? Mm. Number one is, be open to variable change, for sure. Uh, two, not in no specific order. Two, believe in what you're selling. If you don't believe in it, no one else is. Yeah. You are your best seller. If I walked around and wore Ruby Woo all the time, but I'm selling lipstick, shady. Where's the lie? You know? Um, no cap and (laughs) the third thing would probably be embrace failure Mm -hmm. I don't me personally I wouldn't um I would be a little bit more skeptical with someone that started a business and never failed at anything else that every single business was correct because to me, your troubleshooting is a bit flawed, you know? So welcome failure to teach you how to bounce back and, and learn, learn about your, learn about whatever it is that you want to do, dive into it and never be the smartest 
I'm sorry, I have a fourth one. Never be the smartest person in the room. Yeah, the moment that you're the smartest person in the room of business people and entrepreneurs, it's time to go to another room. I think I just saw somebody say that. Um, and I used to always say it a lot and I saw it on Instagram, but I, I would rather leave a room if I'm the smartest person there instead of staying. That's it. Some great tips, some awesome tips. I love it, um, especially all of them. But when you don't see someone wearing their product and they're trying to sell it to you and you're like, why are you not wearing your product? So yeah, Algebra brought up some, some great things. Um, oh, what is your best marketing strategy? Okay. Okay. Me? No. Uh, <laughs> best marketing strategy. I'm an in-person type of person. I'm a, um, because I'm, I am outperforming. I love doing meet and greets. So that works for me. It's been a more difficult task for me to hire marketing companies. I did one and I, I, I lost money. I lost a lot of money dealing with the marketing company. But the only reason I felt okay about it is because I talked to some amazing, successful business people. That's mm-hmm. like top tier. That's just what happens. You mm-hmm. lose money in marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, you spend money and you only get one sale or you get no sale. And you're like, where did my money go? How am I going to make this money back? And you can't think that way. So I am, again, I am my best seller. And uh, marketing, word of mouth, I think is key. I think word of mouth still works. I think that is, we do it with SMS a little bit more now, but I think word of mouth, referring a friend, if, once Pearl uses the lipstick and she's around y'all, she's around more models, more um, women that women and men, they're around more people that need a lipstick that stays on because they're constantly moving. They have a full day. Um, so word of mouth, um, the working mom. Absolutely. I know a lot of working moms That one working mom has been going from 8 a.m. up until 7 p.m. And she hasn't had to reapply her lipstick. And she's had two drinks, coffee, lunch, and everything. And now she's home. Now she has to actually take it off. Work, mom. That, yeah, mom. yeah. That, that <laughs> mom is going to tell the other mothers because somebody's going to say, yo, your lipstick is still on. So word of mouth, for sure. Agreed from Treasure. Uh, D says, agreed. I love in-person networking and word of mouth has always been top tier marketing. Um, yes. And Gail says, you are your best walking advertisement. Snap, snap. Oh, okay. so are you, Gail. <laughs> some of them love lips. <laughs> yes. We're going to, we're going to find it. We're going to, we got you. Okay. So confidence is our mission at our academy. Uh, And we help girls and women build confidence through modeling training, leadership training, and entrepreneurship training. What does the word confidence mean to you? And how how have you utilized that in your life? And is it something that is ongoing? Um, And how does confidence help? And what do you think about the word when you when you hear it? Confidence is a very strong word. Um, And it can be misinterpreted a lot of times it's probably the one thing that is misinterpreted especially when you meet someone for the first time or when you're working with them often Um, there's a confidence that comes with the job and there's a confidence of me knowing what I like and what I don't like and not being afraid to share that which can that takes confidence to even know who you are what you like what works for you what doesn't um Am I this size? Am I that size? Being comfortable enough to accept who you are in the moment and recognize if you want to change something, that you're changing it for yourself and not others and not for an industry and not for anything other than what you want. That's confidence. And that's hard. That, that's, in, in a day and time where propaganda is everything, like even more. Because mm-hmm. it's way more, pro- it's, it's not just what you see on television. It's literally what you see when you walk into the store, um, what people are wearing. I'll give you a great example. My grandmother used to hate, she called them slides. Mm-hmm. So it's a thing to wear the socks and, you know, the athletic sandal, right? Why she come at that house looking like that? I'm like, 
Girl, them sandals is twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, she does not care. For her, it's a slide. It's a piece of plastic, and she shouldn't be coming out of the house like that. With her, she doesn't know that that's an actual shoe. Like that's a, it's the 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 style. There's a confidence that my grandmother would not be caught dead in some plastic slides walking to the grocery store. But on the flip side, there's a confidence that this young lady, is that confidence because it was a $1,200 slide? Or is it confidence because it's comfortable? And that's the first thing that she mm-hmm. had to get to or mm-hmm. where does that confidence lie? Mm-hmm. So you got to know yourself and why you're doing, why are you spending money? Why are you saving money? Why are you eating the way you do? That's confidence. Health is well. That's confidence. You're confident enough to know, let me make sure I'm healthy because I know what my end goal is. And that's not boastful. That's not cocky. And all of these words fall up under confidence for some people because they've yet to understand what confidence is. Even without the job, the, the, the playground that I do for a living for me, there's a version of confidence that has to be there but there's a confidence that I have when I wake up in the morning, I got bags under my eyes um, and I sound like Grover, but I have to get on an interview. I got to know I'm still me and I, I'm still smart. I'm still intelligent and I'm still about to make this move. That's confidence. Yeah. Waking up, being your ultimate self, no matter what someone else sees you as, you know, the core of yourself. That's confidence. Okay, I'm done. I can go on and on about this thing. Look, and I'm, I, I'm letting it pour out too. I'm like, I'm not gonna yeah. say anything because you have a lot of wisdom and you're very deep algebra. You know, like all your yeah. answers are very, 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 very deep, very wisdom based. Okay, um, Felicia says, who is a fashion designer here in Atlanta? Felicia Dietrich. I gotta show you some of her Hi. stuff, algebra. Yes. Felicia, um, I'm, I'm wearing Felicia. This is Felicia on my lips. That's my middle what? name. Boom. Yeah. Okay. So I love your, I love the fashion you wear on stage. If you could change anything about your style, what would that be? This is coming from a fashion designer. Okay. <laughs> Cause that means Felicia about to make that change. Come on, make that change for me. Um, <laughs> Ooh, what would I change? That's a hard question because yeah. I'm so open and knowing that it's coming from a fashion designer. I would change. I would take suggestions. I would listen. I would become a sponge. I don't know that I would personally change because I wear what I want to wear. And I don't. There was a time in my career in the beginning, um, like the very first video shoot. Someone pulled clothes for me and whatever. And it was great, but I've never... I did not like it, but I remember there were pieces in that, on that rack that I was thinking, why would they pull that for me? But I forgot, no one knows me. No one knows my style. I don't know my style. My style is jeans and a tank top and whatever, fly sneakers. That's my style. So mm-hmm. that was a moment for me. So on stage and anything that I wear out in public, I wouldn't change anything that I can think of but I'm so open to anything else. We all know Derek J, right? Yes. I remember Derek J. Um, I see him around Atlanta all the time. And I, I wore sneakers on stage. I still wear sneakers on stage. But there was a moment in my life, in my career, where all I wore was like maybe some true religion jeans and a tank top. My hair is natural. It's out. Um, you know, I don't even think I was wearing makeup on stage at the time. And Derek would always say, algebra. You need to put on some heels. I said, for what? <laughs> what? Me wearing heels ain't going to make me sing no better. Mm-hmm. It's not going to make me do, you know. But I understood at the time because I, I wasn't offended. Derek J wore heels. That's comfortable for him. That's what he did. So I'm like, I don't want to look like that by the feet. I'm on stage. I'm, I want to move around. But I ended up changing that. And I changed it because I lost a bet with my background singer. I had to start wearing makeup on stage and I had to wear heels. And now here I go. Like I lost a bet. So my change, Felicia, will come from either losing a bet <laughs> or, you know, somebody saying, why don't you try this? And I don't mind trying because I love fashion. 
I mm-hmm. love it. I do. If you yeah. see me in something, throw something my way, Felicia. Yes. Um, shout out to Felicia the Crochet Queen. And yes, you two oh, nice. definitely. Yes. Okay. So, um, and Felicia says, I know that's right. Okay, I'm going to take, look, I told Algebra 30 minutes and we're at 50 minutes. So I'm going to take, <laughs> I'm going to take one more question. Okay. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to ask her the last question. She's going to close us out with a pearl of wisdom. Although she's been throwing them all evening. I'm going to take one more question. Um, and this is a future question. Okay. okay. How do you plan? Wh- what are your plans for your business in the future? Yeah. Which business? Um, because I am a business. Algebra is a business as well. Um, for the lipsticks, I've been thinking about expanding. Um, I, I didn't say this, but I, I'm, I'm starting to, I'm going to do mascaras next. Mm-hmm. I think um, I, I just want to do a, I'm a fan of eyes, lip space. I'm not a fan of foundation. I, I, I don't, not, not unhealthy foundation. So I, I, I like things to enhance what we already have. Um, so lashes, um, I, I, mascaras, maybe a bronzers. Like I love enhancing our, our natural face instead of completely being a totally different person um, once someone is done making your, um, doing your makeup. Mm-hmm. So I like things of that nature. Um, in care maybe and I think that'll take a little bit more research than um than makeup would or cosmetics I'm very serious about skin and and health feeling good I, I want us to be comfortable with our faces I'm all for cosmetic surgery I have no problem with that if that's something that makes you feel good but I literally have gotten the kick of seeing my face transform into my mother and my grandmother. I get a kick out of that. I look at my mom and I go, Ma, you look like grandma. <laughs> Ma, I'm starting to look like you. Baby, you always look like me. You just now seeing it. So I get a kick out of that. So I want to enhance that, you know. Um, if there's something that you want to change about your body, again, make sure you do it for you. Because you can't go back. You can't switch that up later on when you're tired of it or when it's not cool anymore, when it's not popular. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so for my business, the, the business of algebra is to grow, to expand the, the, the small businesses that I have as far as cosmetics, candles. Um, I'm, I'm open to whatever. You know, you just never know what, what's going to spark something. I could do business ventures with other people. I would love to do clothing with people. I don't see myself having my own clothing line, but that's right now. Check back with me in about a year. It might be a different, you know, response. Mm -hmm. Okay, you all. And then she also mentioned that she's going from 13 colors to 21. Did you say that at the beginning? Yeah, so um, we have 13. Let's see. Then I have... 18 now but I did five colors and this is another thing use your resources um I didn't state this early but I have five colors that I did with a young lady in Detroit her name is Nab Labs she literally mixes these lipsticks together can create iridescent so I did five colors with her those are always going to be limited edition so we made an agreement that every now and then I'll just do a couple of colors with her and we'll put both of our names on them and it'll be something that we both create. I love that. And her, I'm going to Detroit in April and we're actually going to do a pop-up. And this is a, it's black women working together. Like mm-hmm. we're selling, we're both selling lipstick, but hers is hers and mine is mine. And we're coming together to create this amazing thing. And it was, it's such a beautiful thing. And then after those five, which makes that, let me count Lord. So that's that. Then I have another five, six, seven, eight, about 10 newer colors. And I think I'm going to stop with the lipsticks. I'm going to stop with the lipsticks. And, you know, I have about four mascaras coming out um, spring of this year. So I'll keep you posted on it all. I will. Okay. Yes, and you I will. Follow her on all of her social medias, Algebra, Algebra Bless It. And um, we'll be sure to put it in the caption as well of this YouTube live and algebra 
Thank yeah. you for sharing yourself with us this evening. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you for, man, I just, I, one, I learned more about you, Algebra, and your journey, uh, the dreams, the goals, looking forward to the pearls supporting your movement with love lips and I love that, the pearls. yes yes we are here we are here and if there is something you have you have given us a lot through this talk just by your sheer essence and personality and experience and walk if there's something that you'd like to close us out with a pearl of wisdom um what would that be what what would you want to leave us with um for your close out I'll I'll tell you guys something that I constantly have to remind myself because you get caught up in things that have to be done or things that you've set yourself up to accomplish. Just don't forget to live. Like live. Like live life. You get one. Like you you get one. So just live it. Live life. Like you can get your legs amputated and you can still go get some fake legs and still be able to run and walk. You know, you get one life. We are living in an age where anything on our bodies are replaceable. Um, prosthetics, like you get one life. So just live it. Work, love, have fun. But this is your life and don't let nobody. It's your life. Don't let anyone live your life for you. Make a name for yourself, no matter how big, how small. Yeah, just live. I have to remind myself of that. So I think I'm getting emotional because I have to remind myself to live <laughs> and don't get caught up in got to get this done, got to get that done. Oh, I forgot to do this. Oh, I feel bad. What? Don't be emotional about life. Just live it and do it. Do something you've never done. When you start to get mundane, if you find that there's something that you've always wanted to do and you've never done it, do it. Don't let money stop you. Don't let friends and family stop you. Don't let fear stop you. Just do it. So you can say, oh, I already did that. I'm on to the next. I'm done, Pearl. Stop. <laughs> Look, I'm just letting it flow. I'm letting it flow. All right, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in to another edition of Model Talk Thursdays. Thank you to our special guest, Amazing Essence, so algebra bless it. You all can follow her. Make sure you go on Love Lips and get that lipstick. You yes, all, yes, okay? Yes. Make sure that you get that lipstick and we'll have it in the caption. Again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week for another edition of Model Talk Thursdays. See you, love, algebra. Bye, y'all. Bye, Pearl. Bye. See y'all soon.